Let's have a look at the Odin project. We'll do that for about an hour. So it says foundations start here. Now I think this is open source. I'm not going to charge anything. But if anybody has an issue from the Odin project, let me know with me recording this. This is where it all begins. A hands-on introduction to all of the essential tools you'll need to build real working websites. You'll learn what web developers actually do and the foundations you'll need for later courses. Resume. So let's click that. Overview. Foundations. This is where it all begins. A hands-on introduction to all of the essential tools you'll need to build real working websites. You'll learn what web developers actually do. The foundations you'll need for later courses. Introduction. This section will cover the baseline knowledge you'll need, you need before getting into the more programming aspects of web development. How this course will work. Foundations. How this course will work. Welcome to the Odin Project. The Odin Project is an open source community dedicated to providing the best information sources to take you from zero to a full stack developer. More information can be found at the Odin Project's About page. Well, let's see. The About page. Uh, about the Odin Project. The Odin Project is one of those what I wish I had when I was learning resources. Not everyone has access to a computer science education or the funds to attend an intensive coding school, and neither of those is right for everyone anyway. This project is designed to fill in the gap for people who are trying to hack it on their own but still want a high-quality education. Our beliefs, education should be free and accessible. This curriculum itself is free, and we tried to link to resources that are themselves free so anyone in the world can use them. You learn best by actually building. The Odin Project curriculum is full of projects that will help you build a strong portfolio of work on GitHub to fill out your resume. Motivation is fueled by working with others. We're committed to connecting students together so they can stay motivated and learn faster. Open source is best. Our curriculum and website are available on GitHub, and we encourage students to actually contribute to the project itself. Overview of the Odom Project. 564,756 learners, over 5,000 contributors, and founded in 2013. The origin of the Odin Project. The Odin Project provides a free open source coding curriculum that can be taken entirely online. Since, since its inception, it has helped many students get hired as developers and has assisted countless others in learning enough programming to work on their own personal projects. Founded in 2013 by, now I hope you, I say your name right, Eric Troutman, the Odin Project is now sponsored by Thinkful, a new type of technology school that provides one-on-one -on -one learning through its network of industry experts, hiring partners, and online platform to deliver a structured and flexible education. The Odin Project is maintained and continually improved by a team of volunteers, many of whom learn to code with us. 
Many find success from Odin Project's curriculum because of its hands-on approach with learning and emphasis on building projects. The curriculum is meticulously curated to ensure the content is up to date. Open source. This website and curriculum it hosts are completely open source. That means anyone can work on new features or fix existing bugs on the website. This also extends to the curriculum itself. Anyone can work on new lessons, add new resources, and improve existing lessons. The Odin project would not be possible without the hard work of contributors from all across the world. If you're interested in helping us make Odin better, please find out how to contribute. Okay, uh, you can follow that link later if you want. Connect with our friendly community on Discord, a chat and networking platform, or send us an email. And there's a link to chat on Discord. Help the Odin Project stay current and meaningful to all future students. Please contribute. High quality coding education created by an open source community. Okay, that was from the about the uh, the odinproject.com about. Introduction. In this unit, we'll learn about how the web works and start thinking about the basics of computer and web programming. This is under foundations, how this course will work. Each of the following sections and lessons represents essential baseline knowledge. Even if you have no intention of becoming a web developer yourself, this material should help you gain a useful understanding of the moving parts involved in creating and serving content on the web. We will start by getting familiar with the internet and your own computer. Next, we'll work on setting up a development environment and learning about Git and GitHub. Then we'll go over the basics of front-end technologies like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript before stepping into the back end with a brief foray that covers the basic concepts of back-end technologies. So, a development environment, learning about Git and GitHub, then the basics of front front end technologies like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and then into the back end uh, technologies. All right, by the end of this unit, you should not only understand how the web works, but also be able to identify and differentiate between all of the technologies that you will use to build your own web applications you will be able to build a simple web page, style it, and add minor elements of interactivity while working comfortably from the command line. This section intentionally covers a very broad range of topics. It's silly to go diving straight into server-side programming without having a context for what it is and why it's useful and why you should learn it. How it works. This curriculum works by pulling together the best content from across the internet for learning a particular topic. In each lesson, we'll introduce the topic and try to provide some useful context before pointing you to external resources made by others. Most lessons will contain questions that you should be able to answer before moving on. Some of the lessons will ask you to complete exercises. In addition, we provide several projects throughout the curriculum to help you grow your understanding by actually building things. Try not to think of the Odin project or programming as a class in school. It's not material you learn all at once to take a test and then pass or fail. You can think of it as a snowball. You yourself are a snowball. You're rolling down a hill full of snow and the further you roll, the more snow will stick to you. 
sure snow will also fall off of you and you'll forget things often, but that's just part of the process. Don't be scared if you get up to a project and you feel like you haven't retained or memorized anything. That's natural and happens to everyone. The information will come back to you as you start solving your problems one at a time, relying on Google and the Odin community for help. And whatever else for help, may I add. A note about language. The Odin Project attracts people from all over the world who aspire to learn how to become developers. Please be aware that this curriculum is written in English and maintained by English speakers who are not able or expected to translate it for you. As you develop into a programmer, you will find that the world you are entering into is firmly rooted in the English language. This means that the syntax of your programming language, the documentation that teaches you how to use it, and the majority of the people in the community are all expecting to communicate with you in English. If you are a non-English speaker, or English is not a primary language for you, this fact is not meant to discourage you, but to prepare you. As another part of this preparation, we highly recommend spending extra time on topics and terms that you do not understand right away. We also encourage you to seek out additional resources that teach about these topics in your own native language so you can understand them more fully. In addition to this, you might also consider using a translation dictionary in your own language alongside our curriculum so you can readily reference it as you go. We do not have any recommendations on these since there are such a wide variety of languages spoken throughout the world, but finding one may perhaps be a good first step in learning how to find useful tools online by searching. This is a skill you will utilize and improve as you progress in your learning to be a developer. What comes next? Once you've completed this course, you should be pretty comfortable with the building blocks of web programming, but itching to dig deeper. Though we spend a fair bit of time digging into each of the major topics in this course, it's really just a taste of what comes next and all the cool stuff you can do with it. The last lesson of this course will give you an opportunity to choose between a full stack JavaScript and full stack Rails path, both of which are designed to take the foundation built in this course and build it into an applied understanding of the material. Each path will focus on taking these raw building blocks and honing them into a highly functional skill set. The Odin project is maintained by professionals. We have chosen some of the best resources available and curated a guide on how to go through them. If there are no good resources, we write our own. With that said, know that everything in the curriculum is intentionally included and vital for you to become a successful programmer. As you move forward in the curriculum, each portion is built on everything that came before it. So skipping things will create pockets of non-understanding in your knowledge that start to affect your ability to solve problems and understand the task at hand. Okay, so he says each portion is built on what comes before it and skipping things will create pockets of non-understanding that will affect your ability to solve problems and understand the new tasks. So you need to try and be sure that you don't skip things and uh, that you understand 
Uh, you don't create pockets of non-understanding in your knowledge. All right, additional resources are the only thing that is considered optional unless explicitly stated. These are here in case you feel like you need or want to dive deeper into a topic to get a better understanding. Do not skip anything. Let me pause this. Okay, so I think we can mark this part complete. Next lesson. Foundations. Introduction to web development. What do web developers do? In short, web developers build and maintain websites. Web developers often work for clients who are trying to get their product or service onto the web. The work is typically very project focused and involves collaborating with a team that helps to coordinate the client's needs into the end product. The client could be a tech company, an organization, or a government. The work could involve front end, back end, or full stack web development. Web development could be a good profession for you if you like solving logical problems building useful things, and experimenting with new technologies. Web developers are in high demand, generally have a good work-life balance, and command comfortable salaries. Google your specific location to get a better sense of your local web development job opportunities. There are lots of other search engines besides Google, by the way. For more details, Wikipedia describes the breadth of the web development profession in their entry on web, de web design. Let's see, web design, it gives a history, uh, occupations, so you can go to that yourself if you're interested. Types of web developers. Earlier, we mentioned that web development work could be in the front end, the back end, or the full stack. What exactly do these terms mean? The front end is the stuff you see on the website in your browser, including the presentation of content and user interface elements like the navigation bar. Front-end developers use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and their relevant frameworks to ensure that content is presented effectively and that users have an excellent experience. The back-end refers to the guts of the application, which live on the server. The back-end stores and serves program data to ensure that the front end has what it needs. This process can become very complicated when a website has millions of users. Backend developers use programming languages like Java, Python, and Ruby to work with data. Full stack developers are comfortable working with both front and back ends. At the Odin project, we focus on teaching you full stack development, covering all aspects of web development. For more detail, Udacity has a great blog post on this topic. Three web, web dev careers decoded front end versus back end versus full stack. That's at Udacity. Okay, types of careers. Now that you know about the different types of web developers, let's cover what we mentioned earlier about the different types of clients and employers you may work with. Large tech companies such as Google, Facebook, and Amazon have very stringent hiring requirements. If you successfully meet these expectations, 
they offer excellent pay, benefits, and opportunities. Startups are a bit like the Wild West. For a junior developer, it can feel like a trial by fire because of the pace of development. Startups often offer slightly lower salaries and require longer hours, but they may also offer equity in the company and highly unique environments. As a freelancer, you could command a strong hourly wage and the freedom to schedule and design your own products. However, you would be responsible for getting your own work, which means less coding time, managing billing from clients, which can be difficult, and being solely responsible. Strong people skills are necessary for this path. As a consultant for a web consultancy, you would give up some of your freelancing wage potential, but be able to focus more on the code and less on the hustle. This option also provides a good work-life balance and pay. Finally, large, older companies still need web developers. These companies offer a good work-life balance, pay, and benefits, but often move slower than a company that is highly focused on tech. Tools of the trade. These are some of the basic tools you will use regularly. You may not know what they are now, but you most certainly will going forward. Your computer, Google, a text editor, a CLI or command line interface, Stack Overflow, Git, and GitHub. So, your computer, the search engine Google, a text editor, a command line interface, a Stack Overflow, Git, and GitHub. Motivation. Learning to code is incredibly rewarding, but can also be difficult and frustrating. The strongest assets you can have as a student are a desire to build, a problem-solving mind, and persistence in the face of setbacks. The web development industry has a long history of successful developers with varying backgrounds, so people tend to care more about what you've actually built than how you got there. Read this comprehensive blog post from Happy Bear Software about the journey to getting hired as a brief introduction to what you will face ahead. Actually, I think I uploaded this on um, Rumble. This article, I think I uploaded it to Rumble. I'll link that in my YouTube video if I find where, where the video is. Why Odin? I want you to know that this will not be easy. There are plenty of other online curriculums for beginners, but they are often taught in an extremely isolated and controlled environment and cover only a specific topic. The Odin Project takes a realistic view of what you need to know and has you set up and work in your own environment, much like what you'll be doing when you get a job. It acknowledges that you need a wide variety of skill sets and languages to reach an employable level. The Odin Project is constantly evolving because of people like you who get further along in the curriculum and pay it forward by incrementally improving our content over time. Once you start feeling comfortable with the tools, Start hacking on open source projects, like the Odin project itself. The more you contribute, the more you will learn about what you can do, and the closer you will get to being hireable. These projects will also look great on your resume. Conclusion. Hopefully you've gained a better idea of what a web developer actually does 
and what your life might look like if you decide, decide to take it on as a career. This has only been a teaser into the world of web development. In this course, Foundations, you'll take a journey through the entire spectrum of topics that you will eventually need to know. This course jumps around to a variety of topics that you may be totally unfamiliar with, providing you a small taste of each and then moving on. The following courses will dive deep into these topics. You will build dozens of scripts, projects, and websites to cement those skills that will get you hired. Getting all the way there is going to be challenging. In fact, you should check out the post, uh, Why Learning Code is So <clears throat> Hard, so you have a good idea of what the journey ahead is like. But what worthwhile thing is truly easy? Yes, it's going to be challenging, but it's also going to be fun. And it might even be life-changing too. What are you waiting for? Additional resources. This section contains helpful links to other content. It isn't required, so consider it supplemental. Quora, how can I become a really good web developer? Quora, what makes a great web developer? Jared the Nerd, what makes a good web developer? Free Code Camp, things I wish someone had told me when I was learning how to code. TechCrunch, don't believe anyone who tells you learning code is easy. Code Quizzes, deliberate programming practice. Roadmap to becoming a web developer in 2022. That actually sounds kind of interesting. Uh, if Vivaldi, oh, uh, interesting. It is actually a GitHub for the roadmap. This might be interesting to look at. Uh, update, thanks, work, fix, homepage, dependencies, read me. I don't know. I'll have to look at that outside of this video. What's our time so far? Okay, 30 minutes used up. I'm going to mark this complete, but I plan on looking back at some of these out, out of the video. All right, foundations, motivation and mindset. Introduction. Learning to code is incredibly rewarding, but can also be difficult and frustrating. Like any skill worth knowing, it takes time to acquire, and it can't be learned in a weekend or even a month. With that said, we believe anyone can learn how to program as long as they are willing to put in the time and effort. So before we get into the meat of the curriculum, we're going to go over the following to help you get the most out of the Odin project. The things that will help you succeed in your goal of learning to code and the pitfalls that you should try to avoid. Motivation. Take a moment to think about why you have decided to learn programming. Do you want to have a fulfilling career that pays well? Are you excited by the creative outlet programming provides? Are you determined to develop the skills and abilities to build any app you can think of? Do you want to start your own company by turning an app idea into reality? Your motivation could be a combination of these reasons or something else entirely. Whatever it is, hold on tightly to your motivation. This will be what pulls you through to the end of this journey, giving you a definitive goal to aim towards. 
I don't know, maybe you want to help defend, uh, you know, I'm going to just add this in. Maybe you want to help defend against the all the hacking attacks from China and Russia. Maybe you're offended by Russia attacking Ukraine and you want to help uh, uh, on the Internet wars uh, against countries like Russia or China. Uh, it could be anything, right? To give your motivation a bit of a boost, you can read about the success of others. A woman who taught herself enough to land a job in five months. A 32-year-old who taught himself programming using the Odin Project over a year and landed a job. Those sound kind of interesting. Growth Mindset. Your mindset is very important when teaching yourself any new skills, not just programming. Your mindset will have more of an impact on your chances of success than just about anything else. Someone with a fixed mindset believes if they don't get something on their first attempt, they never will. They believe that they simply aren't smart enough to be able to do or understand some things. However, there is a wide body of research showing that intelligence is not fixed, but can instead be developed. Someone with the growth mindset believes they can get better at anything with effort and persistence. What does this mean for you? It means you can learn new skills and develop new talents with persistence and grit. There will be many times throughout the Odin Project that you will get stuck on a concept or a programming problem and may find yourself questioning your ability to learn programming. When you find yourself in this position, remind yourself that you may not get it yet, but that with persistence and grit, you will. Struggling with something is growth. It doesn't matter how long you struggle with a concept or project. All that matters is that you have the grit and tenacity to see it through. That's how real learning happens. While you're working through the curriculum, embrace the struggles you encounter with difficult concepts and complex projects. Be sure to celebrate your persistence at overcoming those struggles. When you find yourself questioning your abilities, reflect on the successes you have already achieved while learning to program. The projects you have completed and the concepts you once didn't understand but now do, this is all the proof you need that you can do it. To learn more about the growth mindset, check out these resources. Believe You Can Get Better. That's TED Talks' Carol Dweck, The Power of Believing You Can Improve. Grit, TED.com Talks, Angela Lee Duckworth. Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance. And you can learn anything at the Khan Academy Talks and Interviews, Conversations with Sal, The Learning Myth, Why I'll Never Tell My Son He's Smart. The Learning Process. Learning concepts and then practicing them will help you to more fully understand how things work and fit together. Projects are the ultimate method for ensuring that your theoretical understanding aligns with how the programming concepts and techniques actually operate. Okay, you heard that? So the projects are the ultimate method to ensure your theoretical understanding aligns with how the programming concepts and techniques actually operate. So the projects are key. They're the bridge between the theoretical 
and the practical. When learning, your mind will consistently switch between focus mode and diffuse mode. Focus mode occurs when you are consciously focusing on learning, reading, watching videos, or working on a project. Diffuse mode occurs subconsciously at times when you are not actively learning, such as when you are doing the dishes, exercising, or sleeping. In this state, your mind goes about the business of connecting what you've been learning to the other things you know. This is where breakthroughs happen. It's important to know that your mind goes through these two states when learning because you can utilize this to make your learning more efficient. When stuck on a concept or project, Taking a break to refresh and let your subconscious work on making connections more often than not yields a solution to your problem. The trick is to put effort into solving the problem first and then take a break. In short, understand it, practice it, and finally, teach it. Teaching what you know to others is a great way to solidify what you have learned and can often reveal holes in your knowledge that you wouldn't have identified otherwise. You can practice this method of learning by helping others in our community. To learn more about the best ways to learn, go to uh, Learning How to Learn on Coursera is highly recommended. The Ruby Rogues have a podcast on how to learn. That's devchat.tv Ruby Rogues, Rogues 131 RR How to Learn, which should be motivational and useful to you. So check it out for some useful thoughts on learning. What to do when you're stuck. You will inevitably get stuck at some point in the curriculum perhaps due to a concept that you are having difficulty understanding or perhaps due to something not working correctly in a project. Whatever it is, use the following tools to get unstuck. Google it. You can be certain someone else out there has encountered the same problem as you at some point. A quick Google search can often lead to a solution. Take a break. Allow your diffuse learning state to work on the problem. So Google it. Take a break. Ask for help in our chat. That's their Discord. Come prepared with your research. People will be more willing to help you when they can see you have already put effort into trying to figure out the solution on your own. The next section is managing your study time here. You will have more success with Odin by putting consistent time into it rather than working on it once a week. Building a habit of studying every day at a specific time and with a specific goal will ensure that you make consistent progress. It may take you longer than others to grasp concepts, or it may take you less time. This doesn't mean you're smarter or dumber than others. It means you've had differing life experiences that may or may not have prepared you for learning this stuff. Someone who grew up around an engineer may have some advantages over someone who didn't, but it doesn't mean you can't learn those skills. The Odin Project isn't like college or university. It is self-paced and allows you to get a really solid grasp of concepts before moving on. In school, you're forced to keep up or you will fail. The difference here is that coming into the Odin Project, you're not expected to have much knowledge. There are no prerequisites. 
We've had people be successful coming through here that only knew how to check their email with a computer. We've also seen success from computer science degree holders. Treating the Odin project like a static timeline is understandable, but is a sign of misplaced expectations. You simply don't know what you don't know yet, and that's okay. There's no due dates on things in the Odom Project, so you can spend the time to do it right and discuss the topics. Deadlines cause unneeded stress. Since the Odom Project is a free and open platform, you are not beholden to a deadline. Creating your own deadlines is a good way to rush concepts that should not be rushed. This course is very research-based, meaning you will have to do research to complete tasks and projects. There's no telling if you can find the article or post that helps you in the right way, quickly to meet your deadlines, but I bet you learned a ton along the way that you can use in the future. People that do this kind of research and strive to write better solutions tend to become better developers in the future. There's no knowing how long it could take you to learn how to query stuff to find your answers. There are no solid guidelines on that. If you're doing the Odin project because you need a high paying job right now, you're not going to become a solid developer within the time frame you have set. Stress and anxiety absolutely do not help you learn either. Relax and just enjoy the ride. Long story short, don't worry, just go learn. Now, pitfalls to avoid. The following are some of the pitfalls that beginners often encounter when learning how to program. Try your best to avoid these. Procrastination. Procrastination will be your biggest enemy when trying to make progress. Solution. The Pomodoro Technique is a way of managing your time in order to stay focused. You can look that up on Wikipedia. The idea is to set a timer for 25 minutes and to work on a task until the timer goes off. If you get distracted or interrupted during the 25 minutes, start the 25 minutes of work over again. Once you've successfully focused on work for 25 minutes, take a five minute break. When your break is over, repeat the 25 minutes of work and five minute break. After you've completed four 25 minutes, minute blocks of work, take a longer, 15 to 30 minute break. The Pomodoro technique is great for avoiding procrastination as it forces you to work without distractions since the work time only lasts 25 minutes before taking a break. It's not overwhelming, making it harder to rationalize procrastination. To learn more about the Pomodoro technique, read this great article. It's at medium.com, life hacks, more productivity with the Pomodoro technique. If you want to try it out, Tomato Timer at tomatotimer.com is an easy to use Pomodoro timer. I'm using a timer now on um, DuckDuckGo. I just searched timer to get that timer. And you can use plus to get up more timers. Um, oh, where was I? All right, not taking breaks. As you get into the material, you may feel compelled to con continuously study for long periods of time. It might seem like you're getting more work done at first, but this often leads to burnout, which consequently results in lower productivity. It may seem counterintuitive, but you'll actually get more done if you regularly step back to recharge your brain and body. 
Studies show that performance increases after breaks of all durations. From extended vacations down to micro breaks of 30 seconds. John Trugakos, Associate Professor of Management at the University of Toronto, says that mental concentration is similar to a muscle. Our focus becomes fatigued after sustained use and needs a rest period to recover just like a bodybuilder resting between sets at the gym. Solution. Use the previously mentioned Pomodoro technique to time how often and how long to take your well-deserved breaks. Feel free to play around and experiment with different frequencies and durations of breaks. What to do during your break. Listen to music. Journal. Doodle, meditate, play a quick quick game, go for a short walk outside. Uh, you can add things like pray. Uh, read this article, simpleprogrammer.com, taking breaks will boost productivity. For more information on breaks and productivity. Digital distractions. Digital distractions are email and Facebook notifications and time-wasting websites such as social media. These distractions break your focus and make procrastination tempting. Therefore, they should be avoided during study time. Solution. Turn off notifications and add a blocker to your internet to limit your time on distracting sites. Physical distractions. Physical distractions are distractions from your environment, like a TV in the background or other people talking. These distractions can be just as damaging to your focus as digital distractions. Solution. Find a quiet place to study where you can go to focus in your home. If that's not an option, you can use noise-canceling headphones to block out noisy distractions in your environment. Rabbit holes. Because we cover so much material on the Odom Project and link so many high-quality courses and tools, it is easy for students to get pulled into rabbit holes by spending time trying to learn all there is to know about a subject that they aren't ready for or won't benefit them much. We have put a lot of effort into structuring the curriculum so that all of the important things that you need to know about web development are covered exactly when you need to know them. Solution. Stick to the path laid out as much as possible. Try to limit time spent going down rabbit holes as these sidetracks can really ruin your momentum. Comparing yourself to others. Students often compare themselves to others who are farther along in their coding journey or have, or have more experience. This is a recipe for depression and frustration. Solution. Only compare yourself to your past self. Have your abilities and knowledge, have your abilities and knowledge improved from where you were last week, last month, or last year. Be proud of the progress that you've made. Conclusion. Learning any new skill is a journey full of speed bumps and obstacles to be overcome. We hope that the principles laid out here will put you in a much better position to succeed and to get the most out of the Odin Project. Without further ado, Let's jump into learning web development. Now, additional resources. This section contains helpful links to other content. It isn't required, so consider it supplemental. Managing inspiration and motivation. That's markmanson.net. Do something. Learning to code when it gets dark. That's medium.freecodecamp.org 
learning to code when it gets dark. Uh, improve your typing skills with keybr.com. Use this keyboard trainer if you find your typing speed is holding you back. We recommend to spend five minutes every day after you start your PC. So that's keybr.com. Practice typing with monkey type. A minimalistic, customizable typing website. Test yourself in various modes. Track your progress and improve your typing speed. It has a great community and frequently receives new features. Even though it has so many features, the experience is still very polished. That's monkeytype.com. Why procrastinators procrastinate? Learn about the instant gratification monkey. Rational decision maker. Panic monster. And how to navigate the dark playground. Okay, why procrastinators procrastinate is at waitbutwhy.com 2013 uh, why procrastinators procrastinate. Now I'm going to mark this complete and pause the video and I'm going to go back and look at some of the links. Thank you uh, for listening. We're close to our time.